In this video, we'll be looking at cubic graphs. So cubic graphs are graphs of cubic functions. So firstly, what are cubic functions? Well, they're functions to the power with the highest power of three. So that's really important. So examples could be x to the three plus two x squared plus six, etc. So it doesn't matter really what goes here, as long as you have the one x, the unknown variable, to the power of three, and that has to be the highest power. So if there was equations such as x to the four plus two x to the three plus three, for example, that would not be a cubic function, therefore not a cubic graph, as the highest power is four. So that's the highest power. And the reason why it's three is you can remember the cubic is if you're talking about a cube, it's got three dimensions. So you've got the one, two, and then you've got the depth as well. So hence why it's three. So in a general sense, a cubic function can have a general form ax to the three plus bx squared plus cx plus d where you can have a constant and then each of these terms. However, the terms can equal zero. So i.e. 2x cubed plus 3 is still a cubic graph and still a cubic function. So this is a general sort of form. However, they can you can represent cubic graphs in many other forms as well. And often this you can have an equation in this form, but without a calculator, it's very hard to graph. So you have to factorize it and get it in forms that is easier to graph. For example, a form such as this here. We have, let's say, x plus 2, x minus 3, 2x plus 3, in which if you expand that out, you will get the form, In you'll get an equation in this form, hence it will still be a cubic graph. So what do the cubic graphs actually look like? So there are multiple ones it's not like linear lines where they're always sort of straight or quadratics where they always have a turning point. They can have different sort of forms, as you can see here. So both of these graphs here are cubic graphs. However, they're slightly different. So if we look at this one, this is on the form where you have, let's say, y equals, and you have three brackets where you can have sort of like x plus a, x plus b, x plus c, for example, where a, b, c are different values. And therefore, you get the three different intercepts. And therefore, you get two turning points at the bottom and a turning point at the top. So in that form, of course, if you expand that out, you can get the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And once again, this is in the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And that's why I said it's often you need to factorize it to be able to see what type of graph it looks like. Because from here, it could look like this or it could look like this. You're not sure. So in a simplified form, rather, this is an ax plus c squared and then plus d on the outside. And you can also have a here. So these are like dilations, translations, but oh, so that should be to the cubed, not squared. If it was squared, that would just be a quadratic. So that is a three, and that's cubed. So the important thing is you have a bracket, which is cubed with x inside it. So that's a x plus a. And then here you have a point of inflection. So that's a point of inflection. And just to note that the gradient does equal zero here. So m does equal zero. So at these turning points, you have m equals equal to zero, and at this point, you do have m is equal to zero. And technically, this is, for m equals equal to zero, that's a stationary point of inflection. However, you don't have to worry about this uh, too much in this course. You just need to know that it has a sort of a point of inflection or stationary point of inflection if the m equals equal to zero, or just a point of inflection if it looks something like that and that's what a cubic graph can look like. So you have these different forms, and that's why you have to factorize the general equation so you can get it looking like this. Now, you can, the graph can have a turning point on the x-axis. So here you have y and the x, and if you're ever graphing, you always have to label 
the axes if I ever forget just make sure that when you do the equations you always have to label y and x and then you can have a sort of turning point on the x-axis so before if you look here we had three x-intercepts but rather here you have the same shape but you have two intercepts and to get this general form you have let's say that is negative one and here you have three then you can have x plus one squared times x plus uh, three or x minus three and then we'll put a out here and like possibly yeah, a because it's may not be the exact however in with regards to turning points you have x plus one squared x minus three times here and that's because when x equals negative one y equals zero and when x equals three y equals zero so that makes sense that's why those two are turning points and then you have a squared times that by x so you can see that it's going to be x squared the highest term is going to be x squared times x which will equal x cubed so therefore that's why it's a cubic but the reason why it doesn't just go like through here and continue and then intercept and then go through again and has a turning point is due to this squared term here. And if you remember what a quadratic looks like, a quadratic looks like that. And you can see a turning point down here. So it makes sense. If you have a quadratic as a turning point, it's going to have the turning point of the quadratic, a turning point at the x-intercept. And we'll have the shape sort of, of a quadratic there. Of course, it may not be symmetrical. And then there'll be another turning point there, and it'll come back down. So in general, and this is for later, more graphs as well, not just cubics. But if you have it in the form y is equal to a x like plus a x plus b sort of x plus c, and then this one is squared, then you're going to have a, it going touching the x-axis and then coming back up again or if it was coming from the bottom it would go up touch and then come back down for example but if it is just one so if it's to the power of one you just normally you forget about it but we can write to the power of one here and if it's the power of one then it's going to go through such as you see this point here and there'll be a turning point but it won't be at the x-axis and then if this was let's say to the power of three Obviously, this is no longer a cubic, as you have 2, 1, 3. So it's going to have x to the power of 6 as its largest term. And you don't need to worry too much about these graphs. However, it's interesting to see what would happen if you have x plus c to the power of 3. So if you have x plus c to the power of 3, then you'll get a graph. So let's say it's doing something around there. However, we're now looking at x minus 5 the power of 3. So you have y is equal to this and then all these other terms. So I've just represented by that, which we don't really care about. So we're looking at this point here where x is equal to 5. Now it's going to come through let's draw it a bit better. It's going to come through and it's actually going to be a point of inflection. So if you remember back to this graph here we saw that there was a point of inflection for x plus a to the power of 3. Now this stationary point of inflection or point of inflection is going to occur at, in this graph here if you have x minus 5 to the power of 3. Now this isn't about cubics but it's just showing a general sort of form when you have it in this form and remember you can always have a sort of out the front to sort of dilate it or you can make a negative to reflect the graph. So dilation slash reflection. So if the quadratic is in the form y equals ax minus b squared plus c, then this can be referred to as a, as a turning point form, or also to the power of 3. So uh, the turning point form or the power form or the ba basic form, you don't need to know, but they different books or different teachers label it different ways it's a power form basic form but this you can see straight away what the turning point or point of inflection is going to be and that point is going to be b c so if it's in this form then we know that at this point b c 
the graph is going to look like that or if it's going to go the other way it will look like this. Now how do we actually graph a cubic once you get the equation? So suppose we have an equation that looks like this. It could have been in a different form but we factorized it and we have it here. So whenever I graph an equation I always want to look for the x and y intercepts. So the easiest one is let's say the y intercept. So x is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2 times negative 3 times 4 times 1. So it's going to give us 2 times negative 12, which is equal to negative 24. So I know that this point it has to go through this point here, where you have 0 to the negative 24. Now if you were graphing this, you would want to have a bigger scale, as you know that the x intercepts are going to be pretty close, but you have 0, negative 24. So you want to have it quite large. Now you can't have it to scale as if you have, let's say, x is equal to 1, then 24 is going to be very far down. But as long as you keep it consistent along the y-axis and consistent along the x-axis, it should be fine. So I've got the y-axis. Now I need to know what the x-intercepts are. So let y is equal to 0. Now I know that this occurs when x is equal to 3, when x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to negative 1. So you have to go through the point here, negative 4, 0, go through point negative 1 here, and go through the point 3. Now, I know it has to go through this point. So can the graph look something like this? No, it can't. And that's because it doesn't go through this point here. And that's why it's really important to find the y-intercept as it often can help you determine what shape the graph looks like. So I know that the graph has to go like this. Because these are all to the power of 1, they're just going to go through the line. So I know that they're going to go through. And then there's somehow going to be a turning point, And it's going to continue down. And then it's going to continue up here. Now the turning point may not be exactly at this point. However, you'd have to use a calculator or differentiate to find what the turning points are. So you could differentiate this, let it equal to zero, you could find the two turning points. And that's why I was fine. If you can find the y-intercept, then you know which way the graph is going to be. So as I showed, it couldn't be the other way, it has to be this way. And if you understand what happens to each of the points. Otherwise, you can look at the dilation factor, look at the negatives. However, I find that this that is good to understand looking at if it's positive or negative and looking at the shapes. However, you do want to find the x and y intercepts as well just to make sure. So if you didn't have to show the turning points, so I just said show the intercepts, then you have to label all the points. So this would be 3, 0, and then here you'd have negative 1, 0. Then you'd want to label the graph. So y is equal to 2, x minus 3, x plus 4, x plus 1. And you can see that if you put this into your calculator, then the expanded form of the equation is going to give you y is equal to 2x to the 3 plus 4x squared minus 22, 22x minus 24. And so initially it's going to be hard to see how this graph can look like this one. However, if you factorize it, you can get it in this form. And straight away you can see that all these are even numbers. So you can take out a common factor of 2 and you get x to the cubed plus 2x squared minus 11x minus 12. And then you can factorize this by saying that, well, subbing in x is equal to negative 1 and you'll get negative 1 plus 2, plus 11, minus 12 will equal 0. So you know that x plus 1 is a factor. Use long division and you can get in the form of here. We have 2, x minus 3, x plus 4, x plus 1. Now, just be careful if these are all to the power of 1, but if there was 1 to the power of 2, so it's x plus 3 to the power of squared, then rather than going through, it will... have a turning point there and go and turn at the x-intercept and then if it was in the form x plus a to the cubed as we showed previously where you have 
it in this power basic form, then the graph will look like this.